Okay, good day, ladies and gentlemen. So now we've talked about text, we've talked about sound. Uh, the third and final type of media that we're going to talk about are images. And what we're going to look at today is how images are digitalized and how we can calculate the image size again. So the three things we need to know about um, are images, pixels, and bitmaps. So to the left here, you've got a very roughly drawn image of a face. Okay, here's the face, two eyes, and a little surprised mouth. And what an image is, an image is really a visualization of something called a bitmap. Okay, so in memory, in the computer memory, we're going to have a bitmap, a series of bits, ones and zeros, which are then get collected together into a bitmap. So a bitmap is a collection of pixels, and a pixel is the smallest unit on the image. So it's a single color, okay? If you take any image, any picture, whether it's a picture from the camera or a picture you generate yourself, the smallest square of color is called a pixel. And that will be mapped onto a bitmap, and then the hardware takes that bitmap and produces an image. So just like the sound has different uh, bit depths, um, in images, we also have a, a, an idea of color depth. So the color depth refers to the number of bits that are going to be used to store the color of each pixel. Okay, so with our little smiley, so, well, little surprised face here, we've got a bitmap. So this is my bitmap. And what we've set up here is a monochrome image, which uses two colors, okay? Which means we only need one bit. So zero is gonna be white, and one is gonna be black. So here, I have zero, 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 or a row of zeros, which means I'm gonna map that onto a row of white squares, and then three zeros, and then three ones, and then three zeros. Okay, so this image here, this monochrome image, uses one color and it has a depth of, sorry, it uses two colors, black and white, and so it has a color depth of one bit. Now, the image that we had with the white and black image, okay, all that is doing is using something called a color lookup table. So we have our image here, and we have our bitmap. That hasn't changed, okay? Zero is still white, one is still black. But on the image on the left, we have a color lookup table, which is zero is white and one is black. Now, we can change the color lookup table to have zero is one, and, sorry, zero is white and one is green. And then we would have this image here. Okay, still using two colors, still has a bit depth of one bit, except now we're not using uh, white and black, now we're using white and green, and then we get this different color, this, to get this slightly different image. Okay, but the bitmap would be identical for both of these images. Okay, so that's the role of the color lookup table, is that it converts the bits per pixel into a color. Okay, so if we want to have more colors in our image, then we need to have more colors in our color lookup table. So here I've got four different colors, which means I need four entries in my lookup table. That means I'm gonna need more bits to record each color, okay? So here I've got color lookup table where each pixel is gonna be two bits. And if we look at the map, at the bitmap, we can see that my top row is a row of zeros, zeros, because that, that, that maps onto white. And then I've got these three black ones here, and then I've got zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. And then my two blue ones, there's one, zero, and one, zero, and then a red one at one, one. 
So you can see that using more images means we need to have more entries in our color lookup table, which means we need to have more bits per entry. Now, if I've got an image which is nine columns by eight rows and one bit per row, that means I'm gonna need a total of 72 bits. If I've got nine columns, eight rows, and two bits per pixel, that means I'm gonna to have to have a total of 144 bits. So by increasing the number, of Im the number of colors in our image, and in fact, by increasing the number of colors in our color lookup table, we increase our file size. So this slide, I wanted to show some common color depths. Um, starting off with monochrome. So you can see here that the, uh, the imagery you can produce with monochrome, so just using black and white, can still be incredibly detailed. Now it looks like there are lots of different shades in this image, but actually it's just black and white placed together closely or further apart. Um, that effect is called dithering. Um, and it's, it's quite common, and as I said, you can, you, it can be used to produce some quite stunning artwork. Then we have a uh, 16 color, which, is, um, which uses four bits. Uh, so that's 16 different colors. And then we've got um, the one that most computer games use, the lots of sort of 2D computer games platformers, which is 256 color, which is eight bits. And you can see that you can get some quite detailed imagery with uh, 256 different colors. And then the next common step is to use 24 bits, which is RGB, and that's a potential 16,777,216 different colors. So this is what most photographs would use, um, especially when you uh, understand that the human eye can only differentiate 10 million different colors. So RGB colors um, can specify six million more colors than the human eye can distinguish between. Okay, so we've, always, we've already talked a little bit about how we calculate a file size, but just to go over it again, to calculate the file size for an image, you need to know the columns, the rows, and the color depth. Color depth being the number of bits per pixel. And as an example, if we have an image which is uh, 1060 columns by 980 rows, which is about standard for a small image for a small photograph, using 256 colors, then we can calculate that for 256 colors you're going to need eight bits, and that then means your 1060 times 980 times eight gives you eight million bits, which works out to be about 1.38 megabytes. Okay, so that is a walkthrough of how images are stored as bitmaps and color lookup tables and how we calculate file sizes. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me and I look forward to seeing you all soon.